Um, I call to order this meeting of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. Um, we have enough for a quorum, so we're going to get going since we have a lot of things. To do. Um, first part of the meeting, what I want to do is talk about the teacher's contract. Um, I'm sorry, the administrator's union contract. Um, so I, where's Jill? Jill, do you want to do the discussion on it or do we want to have Rick I'm here. or Marge? Who do you want? Anyway. I'm, I'm just going to give a quick introduction and have Alan walk through the memo. But Alan says he's in the waiting room, Jack, if you can let him in. Um, and then I hope if, or, or Jenny, thank you. I hope if there are um, questions, Marge is great on the on the HR side and Rich is, you know, has the numbers imprinted in his brain. So um, again, we'll give you a heads up and then please fire away. Hold on um, for a second. Got to second. find who's in the waiting or how I get back. Jack, if you open up participants on the dashboard on the bottom you can see a Watch list it. there it is yeah i feel so technically in it um okay hi right, alan so I'll, welcome I'll, I'll kick it off while alan's just jumping in um so the you got a memo from us so you've seen the larger context. Um, I wanted to back up even a little bit further, um, to sort of preface that as you've heard us open up our budget discussions and, and talk about one of our major budget goals being recruitment and retention and what that means. Um, you, there's a portion of it that you see in this contract. As we know, a lot of what's actually in our budget is settled outside of the uh, d budget deliberations and <clears throat> contracts are a major part at least 70% of our budget. Um, so when we talk about recruitment and retention for staff, we're talking about pay, we're talking about uh, support structures, we're talking about leadership opportunities, and we're talking about lifestyle. Um, in this contract, you see pay. Uh, you can see, of course, that there's a general wage increase of 3.2533, uh, which nets out um, to a 6.19 right percent the first year um anyway do you also see uh that with our system principles we're trying to right size uh and match work and salary so what we took a look at for our elementary assistant principals who were a little underpaid relative to out to their um comps in the DERG, we've actually expanded the amount of time, the number of days in the year that they're working, which brings their pay in line with the other folks in the DERG who are working in the same position. Um, Alan will talk specifically to more lifestyle indicators that we looked at. Um, support structures and how we work with administration happens outside of this contract. You'll see that carrying through the bu budget discussion and leadership opportunities, uh, for the most part, outside of the, the discussion with uh, the possible of exception of of expanding, for example, um, the um, opportunity to get pay for for study or compensation for study, I should say. Um, so, again, with that, I'll have Alan uh, actually walk through the memo, walk through the numbers more specifically. Uh, Rich and Marge can answer background questions uh, that are either numeric or HR in nature. And I thank you all for having us and for uh, listening to the details of this contract. Do we have Alan? You just asked him to unmute. Marge, you want to pick it up if you don't mind me putting on the spot, and and or Rich, one of you, and sort of walk through the memo, and then Alan can jump in when he gets here if need be. Oh, yep. Yeah. Rich, why don't you start with the money? Sure. Um, so the contract is a three-year contract. Uh, the total settlement is about 13.5%, which really mirrors where the teacher settlement came in at as well. They're around 13.5%. Um, Jill did mention one of the, the big changes is the increased work days for the assistant principals. Um, that equates to $71,000. That's about 1%, a little over 1% of uh, that 6.19% that you see in the first year, which then drops to 4% and then about three and a quarter in the last year. Um, 
you know, overall, we eliminated the 85% track for administrators. And so what that will do in the future is it will reduce step costs as new administrators are hired. Um, the educational degree stipend, uh, which is for administrators who either have a PhD or an EDD, went from $1,000 to $2,000, uh, which is really more in line with where some of our other Fairfield County districts are. Um, so overall, the contract um, calls for a over $800,000 increase, $858,000 increase over three years, uh, which is again a 13.47% increase uh, over three years. In in total or? Um, okay. So you're looking at the total increase if I add up the increase for all three years, Rich. Is that correct? Correct. So it, it averages out to about 4.5% a year, right. uh, again, which is similar to the teachers. Um, but over the course of three years, it's that 13. All right. For the committee, it, just in case you do not have the document in front of you. The increase, in the increase is, and I'm going to go round numbers is 378,000 the first year, 262,000 the second year, and 219,000 um, in the third year, which equal that total. So um, the, um, I, I don't know if the, you wanna talk about some of the lifestyle. I saw that the, um, the spousal um, maternity leave was added, which is consistent with um, the teacher's contract and something that I personally agree with. Um, so I'm glad to see that that's there. Um, but um, some of the, I, I also did a check on vacations. Um, I like to at times do a comparison between the administrators at the, um, town side of the business versus the um, Board of Ed to see equivalent type of roles. I noted that the um, on the vacation that you're 18 days and if you're working a 12 month year, you end up with the 233 um, being able to be carried forward and um, the on a uh, 10 month um, work year, you have 190 that you can accumulate over time. That is consistent with the town and the uh, carryover on vacation. It, while they get five weeks, uh, the 10 day carryover is also consistent with the town administrators. That's just for the committees. Marge, do you, or Alan, do you want to add? some of the color around uh, what we were trying to accomplish also vis-a-vis -vis, um, lifestyle and, you know, something like the, like the remote work, et cetera. Sure. I'm sorry. I I'm, uh, apologize for um, my technical difficulties at the start. I did not hear everybody. Uh, so if I repeat some things, uh, you, you will forgive me. Uh, but that this, uh, and perhaps uh, Ms. McCammon has already set the scene in some of this, but uh, with losing close to 50% of, of, the administration turnover in the last uh, during the last contract. Uh, one of the one of the um, objectives here was to become uh, more competitive, uh, have recruitment and retention uh, addressed, uh, recognize actually the, the hard work of the staff, and uh, sort of try and uh, provide a little bit of life uh, balance uh, for our administrators. Uh, we have done that through certainly the the compensation, but also through things like uh, 10 remote days that the uh, 12 months administrators will be able to work, uh, not but will be able to work remotely, but certainly not during the time when students are in school. Uh, so this has become a, uh, this become a sort of ubiqu ubiquitous way of doing work. Um, and it can certainly work for our administrators during days where they're not actually, uh, where students aren't really actually in the school building, such as snow days or, during vacation time. So that was an opportunity uh, uh, to work with our administrators and create a bit of uh, life opportunity, uh, life work, work balance. I will say that, you know, um, uh, I'm sure Jill has said it, but our administrators matter. Uh, if you look at uh, 
over the last couple of years what they've what they've done and guided us through uh, very difficult uh, circumstances with the support of the board and uh, the community in general. Um, but I'll also say that uh, you know le leadership matters. Uh, it's next to the teacher in the classroom. It, it has the highest impact on on student achievement. Uh, they create the conditions for our our teachers and our students to be successful. Uh, this is an opportunity to recognize them. We did something similar to the teach to the teachers. We recognized where our lowest um, compensated staff members are, which is really at the elementary uh, school level, um, where they were in at the, the lower part of the DERG in terms of compensation. So we had an opportunity to increase their number of days of work, uh, thus increasing their comp uh, compensation. So that was another strategy that carried over from the, the teacher's contract to recognize where uh, compensation may be improved on certain levels. And in this case, it was for the elementary uh, principals. Uh, but uh, the, the actual process itself uh, was very amicable. Uh, we did not need any uh, mediation or otherwise uh, to come to conclusion. Uh, and I think this is a, a fair compensation for our, our administrators and, and also fair for our taxpayers. Alan, if you don't mind, I happen to notice that one of the things that were eliminated from this contract is um and hopefully i'm stating this correctly was that um the 85 percent for starting administrators can you shed some light on that or march of exactly what that means and how that was before and why it was no longer in this time marge you're kind enough to, to, to drop drop in there so it's fine but we basically dropped uh the first step which it's not really it's not really a step but it it turned out to be problematic and I'll, Marge, I'll let you just address that because you have some experience of working through the compensation for people there. Right. So at 85% of a starting administrator's salary, a lot of times we would be less than what they would be making as a teacher. Um, so by eliminating the 85 and starting at 90, I, that eliminates that issue most of the time. Okay. So they're starting. It isn't that they're starting at 100%. They're now starting at 90% instead of the 80 Five. Someone without any previous administrative experience, yes. Okay. All right. I, I needed some. Um, is 90 instead of 85. Okay. Gotcha. All right. um, and then um, since I um, have nothing else to do in my life, it being that it's budget time, I actually did read the contract. Um, and within the contract are the stated salaries over the next um three years for all of the positions. And it is different than what we see on teachers or other union contracts, because we don't have both the grade and the step there. These are, this is what the salary is essentially. Um, on that 90% after the first year and assuming that they're in good standing, do they then move to the 100%? The 95. So 95 and then on. Okay. Thank you. See, I do read this stuff. Um, Jenny, go ahead. Um, I have a question on the um, health insurance premium share going up 22%, 23% there at the bottom. What Can you just tell me what the actual number is? Like how much does do we pay in actual premium, healthcare premium share? And so I can put a real number in my head what that is sure uh so it depends on the package of the employee um a single coverage is about fifteen thousand dollars um a employee plus one which is typically the employee and the spouse is about thirty thousand and then a family package is about forty thousand dollars uh so there's 36 administrators in this bargaining unit um and there's about 32 who elect to take health insurance and what is in in your projection what are you budgeting for how much that's going to cost? What's the number for across the entire Darien public school system? For just the administrators or? Yeah, for just the administrators. Um, so it's a few, it, I don't have the exact number um, with me. So the district, has, uh, it's probably about like, you know, $3 million, give or take. Three or $3 four million. Million. Okay. Has, has that's, there up, been... that's up 20%? No. No, no. no. So 1%. 
So uh, their, the cost share uh, will go up 1%. So right now they're paying 21% of the premium um, and then they'll go to 22%. Understood. So then, that's why I was like, it's going up 20% or it's going no, up no, 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 no. from 20 and, and, to 21. Gotcha. And okay. our educators pay a larger share. Now their salaries are more, but they pay a larger share than the towns are. Thank but you. I do believe you're consistent. We used to be the lead other than Ridgefield in the percentage of um, what educators paid as a share. And not, now I think we're within range of we're what We're kind of in the middle are. of the dirt. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Are there any other questions on this? If not, I'll take a motion to... Um, Jack, I had a, a couple quick questions. Just, sure, Nick. Um, I had a question just about that increasing number of days of work, you know, just it, it sort of seems to go in, in opposition to the life work balance goal. So it's just, you know, wondering how people are, you know, how did people think about that? So the, the, the short answer is that the, they end up having to do the work anyway, and it's causing them more stress, uh, whereas this would give them the opportunity to complete the work, particularly when we talk about uh, so our summer programs and being ready for that. And uh, it, it, it essentially is a 12 month position. So it actually relieves the stress in the sense it gives them the work, the, the time to actually do the work. Okay, thanks. And just one other thing um, about the sick days and, and accumulating those over time. How do, how do those work upon retirement? Are they paid out for the entire amount accumulated or is that separate somehow? We don't pay out for any sick days. Okay. So, but hmm. at the end, do you have to be sick to collect those? You and do I know need that, to be sick to collect yeah, those. Yeah, I, I'm sorry that I put it that way, but it's okay. <laughs> that's that's the non-HR way of asking. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> All right, that's good. Um, uh, there is, uh, by the way, on the town side, they do pay out, um, of, for one third day for each day. So there is a payout on the town side, um, on, on that, which is slightly different. Um, are there any other questions? Okay. So can I have a motion? And here, this is one of those unique things that we do with union contracts. We do not vote to approve. We vote not to reject. And the reason why we will always vote not to reject, hopefully, is that, especially if it's an agreeable um, contract, is you never really want to go into arbitration because what happens is, is both sides get to go and put what they want in a contract. Not that this it works on it, but just so that everybody understands, because we have some new people. And the arbitrator does not come like Samson and come to the middle. He picks from column A or column B. And so that doesn't necessarily do well for towns like Darien or the other ones in Hauder. So it's always better to come to an agreeable contract um, whenever we're dealing with our union um is that we, we like in that respect. All right. So do I have a motion to uh, move this? And, um, I have Bill. Um, uh, I have Bill and Bill. Jenny, you can decide which one approved and which one. Okay. Could, yeah. So we're, we're going to have to go with like Bill. But Bill, Bill Smith has approved be. and Bill Dunn seconded. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I realized earlier today I have two Peters and two Bills, so I have to be specific. Um, the um, all in favor, raise your hand. That looks unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for taking your time. And isn't it much more fun to do virtual meetings than <laughs> come and meet with us? Anyway, thanks a lot. We can now move on to the next part of our agenda. Thank you, Marge and Rich. Thank, Thank you. you. Mark, good night, Mark. Good night, Rich. Thank you. So I want to give a little bit of a um, discussion before we even get into 
the individual items on HHR. Um, for those who had nothing to do last night, there were no football games, and unless you're a real big basketball or hockey fan, um, the Board of Finance had their vote last night. There was a concern expressed by two of the members um, about tabling the resolution. Um, that did not go to vote. Mm -hmm. But the final vote for each of these three were four in favor, two against, and one abstention. The, the main reasons that they mentioned for tabling um, it was that we don't have, and this is something that F&B has been asking for for a number of years, uh, or at least the last two, is that they're requesting that we have an overall um, overarching in look at what our investments are going to be. Um, obviously, we're just coming off the, um, the Ops Ridge, and now we have these three uh, schools going on in the distances, Middlesex and Darien High School. There's also other things. We have Great Island that's sitting out there. Um, there's also other things that we need to do. Um, five fire engines will be coming up over the next five years or so. Um, but there's also sewer and flooding and other infrastructure projects that need to be done. And we also will agree with John Wilcock within the committee that we believe that this analysis is necessary. Now, I will speak for myself. And, and the other thing was, um, whether or not, you know, this started at 63 million, then went to 85 million or thereabouts, 82 million, and now is up to approximately 101.5 million. And the question is whether or not, um, we should have, um, stopped at some time and asked whether or not the approach for doing all three at the same time made sense, whether or not all of them should have been built new, which was not the charge of this committee. Um, and some of other things that were asked that I think is a little confusing and I'm going to do some explanation. While it's nice to say there that there'll be lessons learned, um, my own personal opinion is at this time we're a little bit too far down the road there's no guarantee that if we take another look at it that anything will be better some separate analysis put the building of new schools at over 200 million that's not even to say that there wouldn't be educational disruption um the, unlike the ox ridge um, facility the campuses might not allow for building a new school at the same time that the others, which means students would have to be displaced. And it really isn't an option. So while we support John in the need for us to continue to do this, and the lessons learned will really start to apply for other big projects that's coming down the road, being the Middlesex and the Darien High School development, and that's where they'll probably be more likely applied, um, as well as some things at Great Island. Our, our real question here is whether or not the town can afford to pay for the debt service for this. We're not going, we can, we're going to go through some numbers of how this occurred and why. But my own personal opinion is that the committee, um, all of which are volunteers of various disciplines, have done an excellent job on um, some rather difficult circumstances to quantify what's necessary um, to meet the ed specs of these schools. Um, I'll also say that there was a discussion of 30%, and I thought Chris did an excellent job answering that um, yesterday, because 90% of the plumbing and the electrical will be addressed in this um, project. So um, my own perspective, before I ask Chris to take over, is 
it's been identified that we needed to bring three schools up to the standards um, for equal educational experience. At the end of this, the school size for the classrooms will all be the same. The electrical needs to handle the technology of what we need will all be the same. The air conditioning will all be the same. The curriculum will all be the same. And the only nuances there is how each teacher might provide that nuance to them. The educational experience will be the same across our five elementary schools. Some classes may not have new paintings on their walls. The classroom may not be painted or all tiles may not be replaced or there may not be new floors in them. Again, my own personal opinion, having four children, is that five, six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds will not notice the difference. Their parents might, but the kids will not. And so I think it's important to understand that the educational experience when we are done with renovating these projects, which is significantly less expensive than building new, will be an equal experience, which is what the goal was, and will meet the educational specs of the board. And um, I, Alan, I'm gonna ask you, did I articulate that appropriately? My goodness, you've, you've gone to superintendent school. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just be, it, it, it will not be a new building. They're not new buildings per se, but I can guarantee you that the uh, instructional experience and curriculum experience, as Jack said, uh, will be equitable. The spaces, the classroom spaces and other spaces that we need for, for students will, will, will be equitable, as will be the uh, safety measures that are safety and security, because that's another issue that... Uh, would needed to be brought up to speed fairly quickly. So those, those particularly those three things um, uh, will be equitable across uh, all of the all of our schools. Um, and it's actually an exciting time to move for forward with it. Honestly, I can't imagine stalling it, but that uh, I won't put that variable on, on the table because uh, years have passed here. Generations of kids are beginning to go through the school system. Um, it's time that, that it's, it's time that that we bring these three schools up, uh, up to speed, and this project, albeit that uh, there's additional funds uh, being asked for, it, uh, does that, and, uh, and then some. I, I will add one other thing that is a concern that's been mentioned between myself and private conversations. We just got done with Oxridge. We're renovating three schools, and twenty years down the road when I'm going to be very old and crotchety instead of just being crotchety now. We're going to be having a burden on this town, and that's something that we do care about, which is why the overarching review of what our capital needs um, needs to be done jointly with the um, Board of Finance and the other um, boards and the RTF. I know it was mentioned that the boards worked very well together at last night's meeting. The way that everybody works really well together is if you include the RTM in those discussions. That's just my RTM. I'm not asking anybody. Um, so um, I'm going to hand over to Chris um, and Dave and go through some of the numbers, go through the contingencies, why we're doing it. I do have your PowerPoint if you want me to share it. Um, but if not, you can just take it away. Chris, you got on my mute. Um, thanks, Jack. Let me start, though. You circulated to this committee the materials that we had sent, that we had generated for Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance, correct? Um, I did it twice. Okay. <laughs> um, so it may be more efficient. I can do this however people want. Um, on the assumption that people had a chance to look at those materials. Um, and, you know, we presented a couple of different things. We did kind of a, if you will, high level, a high level PowerPoint. Um, we did, uh, Dave Martin worked very, very hard to put together 
a memo that was really in a, the form of a narrative taking the project from its very, very early stages through where we are today in terms of the bid process and how each of the estimates um, progressively increased over that over that timeline. Um, and then he also produced a an Excel spreadsheet for the various components of the of the increase. I guess what I'd like to do is to best use people's time. Would it be easier for you all to just ask us questions? Are there particular things that you focused on um, in those materials that raise questions or um, or that you saw in either the Board of Finance or the Board of Selectmen presentations from the last two weeks that you think specifically you would like us to address? You're on I mute, Jack. People wish they could do that to me more often. Um, the um, Just for an introduction, I'm going to go to Dave. Um, I typically joke about this, but for those who are new, Dave is a former Jedi committee. Um, we, we joke that he's gone to the dark side because he's on one of the boards. But Dave, can you go can you go over um, the increase, what they were in water? Uh, yeah, sure. Anybody else getting that feedback? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting tremendous amount of feedback. Dave, try that. I think it's coming from Dave. Dave. David, I think it might be jump off and log back in. It may just be the connection. I think it's happening. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, his I think mind. we're okay. I think, uh, I think he just has to come back in. So Jack, just watch that. Yeah, he's we're okay now. If I can. Yeah. Okay. I'm letting Dave back in. Um, maybe Chris, while we're waiting for Dave to get fully back in. Um, there, there were some things that I noticed that were added, such as, um, there's new security windows that are being added. Um, Dave, we're going to ask others to, to do things. The, um, the, um, PNZ asked for certain things because as we, as you did in the expansion and everything and doing new construction, um, all of a sudden there's runoff in that. So can you go through some of those things? There's a new um, security on one of the schools where you're changing the entrance and other things along those lines. Um, the, the additional storage and um, just because it's been discussed, the, um, the definition of what building clean dirt is versus not clean dirt and that. If you can cover some of those areas, I would appreciate it because sure. they accounted for a lot of the increase. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, there were, uh, Jack hit on a bunch of the, the, the reasons for a lot of, and, and, and a lot of this is, um, are things that came up in the timeline after we had gotten our last appropriation increase which was december of 2023 when the appropriation went to 80 82 million 250 um and um so for example it was it was after that appropriation increase that um we were asked to <clears throat> bring the security the security up to the same standard um, as Ox Ridge. Um, that included some changes to some of the school entrances. It included glazing on windows, um, things of that nature. That was at um, 
that was done at all three of the schools. Um, lobbies, vestibules in particular were affected, so that required um, some changes in design. We also got um, feedback from the planning and zoning board um, where they wanted us to change some of the um, change the approach that we took to some of the stormwater management on Hindley and Holmes in particular. And, um, and then uh, in addition to that, we were asked to provide additional screening for dumpsters um, and provide rooftop screening uh, around some of the HVAC equipment that was going to be on the roofs. Um, they also asked that we relocate um, the generator um, so that it, at, at Royal, so it wasn't in the way um, of some of the construction sequencing that was being done. Um, there's an underground storage tank at Holmes that it made sense to um, to remove while we were doing site work. Um, those were a couple of the those were a couple of the items that. Um, those are a couple of the specific items that came up. Um, let me see. I think, Jack, were there others that you wanted me to highlight? Yeah, just if you can explain the removal of the unclean soil, which is... Well, it's not unclean soil. There was, a, there was an increase um, attributable to a soil study that discovered that there were... Um, a, it was a higher percentage of what's called unsuitable soil that would affect in particular where some of the new construction was going to be done and unsuitable doesn't mean contaminated what it means is is that it's not um it's not of a nature that when compacted it could support the new construction that was being done in those areas of the three schools what a lot of it was was that it was fill it was debris that was put in the ground from the last time the schools were renovated. There is a small percentage of soil that's contaminated that actually has you know some environmental issues. That's actually being removed. That's being taken off site. And so there was a slight increase to account for the fact that a contractor, a state licensed contractor was going to have to be um, to be hired to do that. And I can I ask two other questions only um being that I represent the, the home school district. A number of years ago, we put in or started to put in boilers, Jill, you may recall this, um, that had both oil and gas capabilities. And I know that Homes has the capability for gas being that they just tore up White Street. Um, is that going to be a gas burner now? Or is it still going to be oil? Honestly, I think we'll have to get back to you on that. I don't, I'd have to go and I'd have to ask um, our engineer. Okay. Um, also, I know that there was some discussion of the collection um, pool at homes and how to, uh, for the runoff water and other things like that for drainage. What, what, what's the end result with that? Uh, the end result of that is that we're going to do um, an underground detention system at both Holmes and at Hindley. Um, and that, you know, that's a fairly costly, um, fairly costly item. And so literally there's going to be an underground system put in at Holmes. It's going to be behind the school <clears throat> in the field, which, you know, water will drainage from the hardscape and the roofs will go into that system and it will be gradually absorbed into the ground. What's so. your time, timing on the construction? I know you went through this last night. So, um. Yeah, the idea is assuming um, we are kind of teed up to get going, assuming that we get this additional appropriation approved. Um, we would be starting construction, starting site preparation work in the spring as soon as school is over. Um, would be able to begin some staging before that. 
um, would have a lot of the a lot of things like the planning around um, what has to happen inside the schools is you know has already been planned. The the idea was we were going to start last August um, because of the um, because of the rebid of a number of the contracts. We got pushed essentially nine months um, for, to our to our construction start. Um, but really, as soon as um, as soon as school lets out in the spring. Um, I'm, I'm going to go through some things because we're not allowing Dave to talk anymore. Um, but um, in the analysis, uh, just so everybody is aware, the, um, we get a school reimbursement from the state. They're giving us um, 20 point change on renovation and I believe 10% on new construction, which is saying that the state is hoping for um, incentivizing renovation rather than new construction. Um, the state also evaluates what their standards are to what we're building. So the example that I've used in the past actually deals with Ox Ridge. If in Ox Ridge, they say that a hallway should be X, Y, you know, I'm going to make up numbers, but six feet wide, and we choose to make it um, eight feet wide, we actually are not reimbursed for the extra two feet that we've determined to be the size of the hallway we want. So the state will be looking at all of our bills as this will be um, continually submitted and determining what our reimbursement rate is. So while we're at 101.5, it's a mixture of 10 or 20 percent, we will not be seeing um, that full amount. We will be seeing somewhat less as a grant that will be coming into us as the um, bills and the completion of certain projects are done throughout the process. When we get that grant money, that reduces the amount of bonding that we will be issuing. Now, um, because that money is going to be in, in the bank. Um, we're not going out, and this is important to understand, on all of these projects, because we've already dealt with three other bond issues, we have to appropriate the full amount of what the estimate is. And the fact is, is that I would be highly surprised if we're going to be issuing 101.5 million in debt. We have to authorize it just in case, but the reality is it will be a somewhat less number. Now, Dave put in, uh, in his estimates based upon what the original amount was reviewed by the state already on the 90 on the 82 um, would be about a 19 percent reimbursement um, in the analysis that was I sent out from the bond council it was estimated at 15 percent but it was estimated at the full amount not the reimbursable amount so we do expect to see somewhat less of that coming in and we will probably be going out and issuing both uh, from what they discussed at last night's board of finance meeting. They'll be issuing a combination of bonds and notes. The notes are um, one year notes where we pay interest on the maturity of it. So that modifies what our debt service will be. And I'm sure we're all hoping that the interest rates will be going down Virtually all the debt that we issue is callable, which also allows the town to call them. And during our budget process, we will give authority for the Board of Finance to um, reissue debt in a certain amount. I believe last year was about 60 mil. Um, so they don't have to come back to us. Um, the other thing on that is, is that some of the contingencies increased, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so there's two types of contingencies. There's a construction manager contingency that's going to be about 2.5 million. That went up by 400,000 and change. And then there's the owner's contingency. That's us, which went is now going to be about 4.8 million. 
that went up by 1.8 million. Now, we have a guaranteed price once we do this, where the contract manager is signing with the subcontractors, if you want to call them that. We're not doing that signing, and we do have bonding to protect us should something go wrong, which is not what happened to the town um, when we did the senior center. Um, part of the contingency is that they find the prices go up in that. That's owned by the construction manager. If we do a change, um, like any other renovation, you know, the price is going to go up from what the guarantee is. Is that the right way to express it, Chris? Yeah. I mean, there's a limited number of things that can cause um, the price over the guaranteed maximum to go up. Um, the most obvious one is change orders where we change a spec in the middle of the in the middle of the project. Um, and that could be driven by a couple of a couple of different things. Um you know, it could be discovering something unforeseen that we need to address. Um, it could be a change in design because there's a better way to design it. Sometimes the need to do a better design derives from having found something unforeseen so they can kind of go hand in hand. Um, but the 5% owner's contingency, um, you know, we're advised by our by our professionals, by our design team, and by our construction management team um, that that that's market for a project like this. You know, we don't we don't expect to have to spend it, and whatever's not spent um, comes back to the you know basically comes back to the town as 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 unfunded, unspent. And the construction manager just not for everybody that's here, was ONG, which I think we can all agree did a really good job um, on Ox Ridge. If that, they were Ox Ridge, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And um, there is some additional staff that was done because um, based upon review of what's going on um, within their team so that we're managing the three schools better than what was originally estimated. I saw that in the documentation that was done. Um, yeah, because all three schools are going to be are going to be renovated at the same time, and so a decision was made that they needed to staff up, um, in particular, um, to work closely with the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing and HVAC contractor because it's going to be the same contractor at all three schools and uh ongap one is wants to basically have a dedicated liaison with that contractor so um i think that covered most of the changes that we talked about that was here one other thing um what percentage does the construction manager um get for all their hard work on this project but it's a percentage of them yeah it's a uh it's a percentage of it's a percentage of um project costs and um project costs are the hard costs and the pre construction fee it doesn't include the soft cost so um hang on one second. Is it 1.7%, Chris? I think, yeah, I think that's right. I have to go back. I don't have the contract right in front of me. I have the GMP amendment, but I think that's right. Yeah, Chris. So I'm I'm looking at the project cost summary sheet. And, and if you don't mind, I have a few questions on there. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't itemize the hard costs on here. Is there is there a reason why or, or do we have an itemized list of the hard costs here? We do. We have a, we have a, hard, we have an itemized list of the hard costs, which is, um, which is about 20 large pages of spreadsheet. Um, okay. Which, and, and, and so we're, we're going the construction manager route. So we are not hiring a general contractor is, is the CM going to serve kind of right. like the, like the GC and he's going to contract out all of the subs. Correct. 
other other than the obvious, you know, cost, maybe this is cheaper. Is there another reason why we're going the CM route versus the GC route? Um, I think it was it was lower risk to us. It's the way it was done at Oxridge. Um, it's called a construction manager at risk, where um, basically we know that if there's any increase over these construction costs, except for a few um specific carve outs that they're bearing the risk of those of those costs going up okay I think we, and... just peter just let me add i think we started that approach when we did the public works garage um because we changed how we were doing construction on that and that became the model for ox ridge and is following through on this we did it for alan o'neill back in 2011. okay okay Okay, so so we have experience um, precedent that that we've been successful with the CM. Um, is so how confident do we feel with this budget now? Has the CM gone out and gotten quotes from the different subs, the, the carpenters, the plumbers, the electricians, that these are now real numbers? Yeah, no, I mean the reason the reason we're here for this increased appropriation is because we went and did um, one round one round of bids in the summer of. 2023 we felt like um we didn't have quite as much bidder participation as we would have liked and therefore we weren't that comfortable with the with the numbers bid um there were 19 total bid packages um seven of those bid packages the we were comfortable with the bids and those contractors agreed to hold their bids until the end of this month until the end of january 2024 um 12 of the packages we decided to rebid because we wanted to get a higher level of participation in hopes that we would get um possibly lower bids we did get better participation but the bid amounts came in only about one or two percent better than they had been in the summer but these are now contractors that and, and these bids were based on you know full construction drawings um and the construction manager has gone over a few a full scope review with each of the trades that they recommend accepting um and so yeah these are i mean short answer to your question is yeah these are hard not to exceed bids okay and, okay, so I appreciate that. And and this CM, I think I heard Jack say that we use this company for the Oxridge renovation or the Oxridge construction, rather. Correct. Okay. Having said that, did we still get at least three bids on these on these three schools as well? I know we I understand we like this this company, but did we get three bids on this just to do our due diligence from other CMs? Yeah, I mean, back in back in spring of. 22 we ran a whole rfp process before hiring a construction manager yeah we did um, we, we did, did for a, the architects as well yeah we did okay. about a million dollars seed money i believe in the april 22 um a million plus change to really first come up with with even the first estimate of what was was out there so um the requirement is that they looked at all these individuals, the architects provided various drawings and other things like that. And um, they did have the ed specs at that time. So they knew what yeah. they were getting into. Okay. Peter, yeah, I mean, I, these are the folks that also, oh, excuse me, these are the folks that also did the middle school and the high school as well. So they okay. do have a bank of work in town. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that, but I, I think it's, it's, it's good practice to get bids from others as well. I think, you know, we, we should consistently be doing that. Just, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. No, for, we, ran full, we ran a full okay. public, we ran a full public um, request for qualifications and then we weeded it down to a smaller group where we did a, a request for proposal. Um, we awesome. did that for both the architects and the, and the construction managers. Okay. Yeah. I, I look, I figured that was the case, but, but I felt compelled to ask anyway, just, you know, ne never assume. So, so I appreciate that. Any other questions? Good questions, Peter. Any other questions? Um, just, just another quick question. One of the, um, 
forms or documents that you had sent us, Jack, previously were was the scope of work increases, and it went all the way from option A1 to, all the way down to option B2. I'm not sure if, if, if you know what I'm talking about, but... Yeah, we can address you know, that. Yeah, there were different options, and one of those options was to rebuild the schools. And I know, Jack, you said a moment ago that it's just, you know, way too expensive to rebuild the three schools. But it, are none of these options now on the table in terms of us taking a vote or, or considering, et cetera? Okay, so let me start, and then Chris can answer. Um, first of all, whenever there's a building committee... While the, we call these school buildings, the property is actually owned by the town. And um, there's three words, care, maintenance, and something else is that the schools are responsible for. Um, so if there's a desire to build anything on any of the school properties over a million dollars, the Board of Ed has to go to the Board of Selectmen and a building committee is established. Uh, that's also if the town wants to build anything over a million dollars, and that's what they did. The committee was given a charge to renovate because these had good bones. They were not given the charge to build new. They were not given a charge to renovate the entire school. That This was their charge, to do a renovation, and they did that work. The subsequent analysis that was sent out was based upon certain questions that were asked by the uh, Board of Finance. And um, and so that was in response to that. Um, so it's really beyond the scope of what this team of people have been asked to really do. So um, it, it is an analysis that's there. Our charge here is not to make a decision on whether or not to rebuild all new schools or to expand the costs that are being presented. Our, our charge is, based upon the work that's being presented, do we approve of the work and do we believe that the town can afford to appropriate and bond this? That's really our charge. In reality, that's really the charge of what the Board of Finance had yesterday as well, um, which is good that we don't have to, you know, we, we know that they did their due diligence in listening to Chris and the other meetings, because I did send out the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance meeting from the prior December meeting to everyone. Um, there's no question, in my mind at least, that this has been a very good team and a lot of hard work has been done. And so these are the numbers. Um, so our question is, do we feel that there's enough contingency um, based upon the grants and how we, how the Board of Finance will decide to bond this? It's, it's not that we're going out to bond immediately. Um, and in fact, we'll actually bond something like about $274,000 less because one of the schools, and I forget if it's Holmes or Hinley, we actually did go out and bond for it. And then we found out that it costs less and there was some state grants on that. So there was about $274,000 left for money that we had actually bond. And it was moved to that specific school's project. So the reality is we've already bonded some, some over there, a very small amount, but it's still there. Um, the schedule that I sent out that was prepared by Jen has at least a rough idea um, of a schedule of when we would be bonding. So, you know, we'll pay some things out like the fire engine we can pay from our general fund. And then when we bond, we're reimbursing the general fund due to one fund to, to another. On schools, um, since they cost a bit more than a fire engine, um, we tend to bond based upon what the expenses um, we're anticipating we're going to pay in a certain part. And the first bond and notes that will be addressed for the school um, will be dealt with in the first quarter. So we'll be dealing with that. I believe that the um, Great Island notes are due. I believe it was April 4th was mentioned last night. 
And so we'll probably be going out for bonding and notes um, in the March Board of Finance um, package we'll start seeing. So does that answer your question? Yeah, and, and last question for me, not to monopolize, is, is the CM contingency at 3%? Correct. And, and do we and do we have a hard cost contingency as well? Maybe around ten percent or so. Are we are we doing because you had mentioned that you know unless there are change orders to, to the work there will be contingencies there. Even owners contingency. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Um, and we've drawn down on that. We I believe it was uh, Dave, Dave is still you there. Stay on mute, buddy. <laughs> the um it's you a shame, can call you know? in by phone if you call in by phone you may be better off yeah um, it's a shame because dave really has a great handle on these numbers you could also use the chat if it's quick <laughs> <laughs> the um the the fact is is that um i think we drew down about 60 percent on the owner's contingency at oxridge so we're we're not anticipating to use all this and we're extremely hopeful extremely hopeful i'm stressing that again that this is the last time we're hearing from them other than to tell us what the status of the buildings are as we go a long time and that's also noted that we do not expect um, i'm not getting into the value engineering which we all believe we should not my favorite discussion on value engineering is my daughter was the freshman class at Darien High School, and we value engineered out a dome in the auditorium that I think about two years later, three years ago, we finally put in. And I will tell you, my daughter at this stage is 32 years old. So um, value engineering is not something that we want to do. But at the same time, we do not expect to see a slew of additional projects coming in from the Board of Ed, such as sanding the gym floors in the foreseeable future. Um, because that's just, you know, there's only so much stuff we can do at any one time and still reserve the uh, town's needs as well. So... Sorry of being on the soapbox. I think um, maybe the answer to the question, Peter, there is a 5% yeah. uh, contingency in the owners. Um, and yeah, I, I think I, that's what you're asking about. I, I, I saw that. I, I know it as a hard cost contingency, but I'm looking at the budget now and I do see the 5% there. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Um, Any other questions? I just have a comment. I mean, having been through this it's a massive undertaking to put a deal like this together and i just want to say how much i appreciate um chris price david martin sarah jill and everyone involved um yeah all i hope i i understand how we got to this number i understand the board of finance is looking at um how to manage the debt profile of this uh, we knew a couple of years ago when this came forward that we always thought that this could create a, a hill of another capital, um, need on a big level way out in the future. Um, so how that gets managed will be determined, but we're sensitive to that. And, um, yeah, I just want to say, I hope you're getting everything you want. Like now is the time to get what you want. Well, actually, it's too late. You already had your time. Yeah, this right. Is you already have it. But I, I'm excited to see. I assuming you're getting everything you want, and I'm excited to see this project come, come to life. So thank you. Thank you. So, are we ready to vote on these three items? We have to vote on them separately, because separately. the state will deal with each. Even though we're dealing with it as HHR, the state deals with each of these buildings as a separate project. So, um, and once we approve this, Chris has oh, hey, hey, Jack, can you let, I'm sorry, can you let Dave Martin in? I think he's dialed in by phone in the waiting room. And that way, if you wanted any input, he's the 917 
Gotcha. 699 number. Dave, why don't you try talking by phone and seeing if that works better? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, Let's you're see. muted, Dave. Well, the phone shouldn't be muted. I don't think the phone's muted. No, I, 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 muted, I muted it initially to try to cut down any noise. Yeah, now we're good. So were there specific... I know I should just shut up and let everybody vote, but were there specific questions that you wanted to see up Anything for David you want now, to that have, now that we have audio? No, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't have anything specific. If there's anything that anybody wants... Me to answer, I'll try. Yeah, actually, I do have a question. So you are renovating three schools together. What if we couldn't finish on time? If there's a delay, you know, what what's the plan then? If there's a delay, what's the plan? And you mean in terms of the education or you mean in terms of the yeah, construction yeah. on the project? So, so basically, if we couldn't finish the renovation on time, then, you know, we are renovating three schools together, then where the student should go for, you know, for school then? Well, but we're not taking actually, that. Remember, we're not yeah. taking the students out of school, right? This is going to, this renovation is going to occur with the kids in the school and be staged in such a way to have the least adverse impact on their day-to-day. -day. There's going to be a lot of the disruptive work is going to be done during summers and school breaks, but a lot of the work is going to be done while the kids are in school. So if there's, if there are delays, um, hopefully, you know, we don't, we don't expect that they would be in those, in those parts of the project that, would not allow the kids to be in the building. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we have plan for the kids. I'm sorry, Jill, was that... I cut you off. I apologize. Okay. I, I will add, and this is a little bit a while ago, but my two older ones went through a renovation at Ox Ridge, and that was the time you went to Ox Ridge and then to Royal. They watched Royal... Be renovated and then by the time they got to middle school we were renovating middle school and they watched that as well interesting enough none of my kids are engineers um but we joke that most of the kids could very well be it since they've watched three construction projects during their first eight years of school but um but anyway um if there's no more questions then we can actually vote um, are we ready? So I'm going to read this um, to move it. The first one is to authorize an amendment to increase the appropriation and bonding authorization from the renovations at Hindley School in the amount of $5,929,045. Do I have somebody moving that? Um, I have Peter and I have Beth seconding. All those in favor, raise your hand. It appears to be unanimous. I have to make sure that all the other people aren't voting here. So um, the next one, can I have somebody move the authorization to amend to increase the appropriation and bonding authorization for renovations of homeschool in the amount of $8,403,800? I have Malin there for the move. I have Peter for seconding. Um, Beth, I'm not allowing you to do your homeschool. Um, the, um, all those in favor, raise your hand. It appears once again to be unanimous. Lastly, um, I need somebody to move, authorize an amendment to increase the appropriation and bonding authorization for renovations at Royal School in the amount of $4,907,000. I have Bill moving. I need a second on that. Um, I have Peter seconding. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. That's unanimous again. Thank you all for um, coming here. I know that you've gone through this several times um, with both the Education Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen, and I appreciate you spending your evening with us 
mm-hmm. to get this done and good luck on um, moving this forward. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Could we just take two seconds? Can you just give a quick summary as to what, how you expect Monday, which is, I guess, the full RTM meeting yes, to that's, proceed that's with respect to, with, with regard to this matter? Okay, I've, um, I sit on rules. Um, and I requested, as is Peter, who's not here tonight, um, I've requested that I'm going to move the first item. I'm also going to give a little bit of an explanation of debt um, because we have six of them and come up with three or four points that I want the RTM to understand. It will include rescissions. It will include authorization and some other things along those lines um, and when things are issued and some of the actions that will be taken by the Board of Finance. Just so, And then we're going to talk about what the average cost of this debt is going to be and what it does to our um, authorized but unissued debt at the end of each of these. So that'll do for the first one, which I believe happens to be Henley. Um, because it's a bond, F and B moves, then Edward Shecker will give a report on that. Um, I am going to speak to Seth. I have a call into him to see if I can't move all three of them at once and then have Ed do his report on all three of them. Um, Mm -hmm. And then we intend to open it up for you. And if you don't mind doing the presentation Mm -hmm. that you've given to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of uh, Finance, um, only because I can't promise that my other um, members of the legislative body have heard this before. Um, And then I'm sure there will be questions and Dave will not be coming in with static, so he can also participate in the answers. And um, the um, and I I would actually prefer, as would Ed, that if there are questions on this project similar to what tr- transpired today, while we have a good handle on it, um, I'd rather the committee answer it than myself. Um, sure. And then we bring all three of them to vote. And um, then you know that um, after those votes and what I'm anticipating, you'll be good to go with your 10 days. Right. Does okay. that does that meet what we're thinking? Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds that's consistent with what I expected. Do we need to talk to anybody to get uh, audio visual if we wanted to project the PowerPoint? That I, I might I may give Kate a call okay. on that. Um, the other thing is is that the documents that um, you distributed um, to our committee and I believe to Ed um, to, to Ed on education, um, I, I think that those are worthwhile documents to be included in the package that's going out to the RTM. So. Because I think they answer some questions um, along with it, and possibly even a, a hard copy of your presentation. Um, so I got to speak to Krista um, about that. Most of us tend to get these electronically, um, but there are some that are mailed. But I do think at this particular case, killing a couple of trees or sending out more information is beneficial than not. So that's just some work that I have to do okay. quickly. So. Okay. No, that's helpful. Anyway, once again, I think that um, Jenny mm-hmm. did a good job in thanking you. Um, we're, we're all very appreciative of the hard work of yourself and the rest of your team has done mm-hmm. on this, doing a building committee is one of the more thankless jobs. Um, and um, so we appreciate those who step up and do it. But thank you. No problem at all. Thank you. Do you need us for anything else or can the building committee folks check off? Matter of fact, everyone else can check off because we have some just other minor business as well as talking about what we're going to be talking to you tomorrow about. All right. um, thanks everybody. Have a thanks, good night. Thanks, Jack and committee. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank, Thank you all. all. Good night. Thanks.
Okay, so let's move on. We've already discussed the um, some of the debt service. Um, that's something that we're going to be uh, focusing on. Um, I believe, Jenny, you had mentioned to me in a conversation that this is something that we actually were talking about um, two years ago when this first came up, mm -hmm. wanting to see a more consolidated view of what we have going on. Um, I know that Kate is already working on that, and we'll see some things in her plan when she goes and does that. So with that, we're going to move on to 10 o'clock again. Um, I sent out a tentative meeting schedule, which is that I could share it, but I'm not going to. Um, so take that. Um, if everybody ha has no problem with what dates, um, unfortunately, we're meeting a lot on Thursdays and Wednesdays in the first part of this um, episode only because we have all these other budget meetings going on. So um, we can go from there. Jenny, did I pick a wrong date? Uh, no, I'm just looking at the, in the agenda. Do you want to, the agenda item is discuss future debt service analysis and also discuss and prepare for okay. many comments. We're just going to deal with this first and then we'll go into that. Okay, so we'll move it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I sent out was the Board of Selectmen um, on, on the schedule has all the remaining um, Board of um, Ed meetings. Um, essentially, they're going to vote on the 13th for their final budget approval of February. The Board of Selectmen will vote on the 7th. The um, required legislative date for them to present their budgets to the Board of Finance is March 5th. The Board of Finance does have a public hearing um, on the 12th. Um, they vote on their final budget on April 9th. Um, with all um, hope, I will be sending out shortly the corresponding members of the Board of Finance so that we have um, who's looking at the budgets from their side. They did break up the Board of Ed and um, onto things, and I may just assign some people to various parts of the Board of, um, board of Ed budget. Um, so we'll do a military assignment um, on that. And then the budget date is May 13th, to which we hopefully will um, know where we stand. Our, our goal is that five minutes after the Board of Finance is done with their budget approval, that we've at least had enough mm -hmm. input and we've come to an agreement that we mm -hmm. could legitimately approve the budget. We wait because sometimes there's things that come up between that and the 13th, and that allows the um, Finance and Budget Committee to make adjustments to the final budget, which once the Board of Finance um, does their vote, they can't. And we've actually done that in the past by adjusting the bill for additional funds. There. So please look at that. On the Monday, January 29th and Tuesday, um, January 30th, the meetings start at 5.30. So I know that's difficult for people who are working, but I will be sending you the um, videos on that. So if you're having problems going to sleep, you can watch those and you should be able to achieve that. Um, I'm going to do one thing. Beth, do you, and then we'll go back to debt. But Beth, you wrote up the comments that we want to make to the Board of Ed. And so I want to just leave that, please. Um, I sent that out, or Beth sent that out earlier. Yeah, I has everyone had a chance to look at it? It's not very long, so it's not hard to run through quickly. Um, does anybody have, we're trying to keep it short and sweet, but if anybody has additions, 
Um, I, have one, I had one thought. Um, I'm not sure that it's policy changes that can't have, I'm not sure the word policy and they'll seize on anything that we say, you know, that's not a hundred percent correct. I'm not sure it's policy changes that came at the last minute. I just think it's, um, a, a, a lack of communication of strategic priorities or how things like, it's funny. I heard one member say, can you tell me everything in this budget and where it goes on the strategic plan. And I thought that was a really silly question. And then I started thinking about it and I thought that is the question, right? Like what, how do we take the strategic plan that we spent money for and then right. come up with, come up with these. So I don't necessarily think the word policy is the right one, but mm -hmm. I agree with your sentiment that I was appalled that all of it came, you know, on Cooper Saturday. And I just, I don't understand why you think that you're going to go to a five-day ELP, which is small. I understand that. But you, or you think you need more APs. And when you're going through your agenda items, you don't think of discussing some of this during the year. It's, I, I don't, I don't get it. And I don't think it's fair to anybody, including your board of ed members. But I support spending money on our schools. That's, there's not... There's no doubt that I support, honestly, every dollar. I just don't understand how we got to this budget, if that makes any sense. So what was your words that you used? Which is difficult I said to it was a scattergram. You know, it was like, it was just, it's like a little bit here and a little bit here, and we'll take this away, and we'll take this away, and, but we'll add here, and we'll add here. And I just, it's not... Um, I just don't. You're not clear on the vision. Yes, and there might be one. I don't. I don't. I don't pretend to know how to organize a school in the most efficient manner. I just don't understand it, and I don't think that the teachers understand it. I think that we keep throwing money. At, it's about time that we've thrown money at our teachers and administrators to try to keep them. But I don't think that an ex that a lack of explanation makes anyone feel that they're working for a great school system, no matter what they're making, frankly. Well, I, want to, I want to go back to the verbiage. So on the third item, one of the committee's concerns is that for the second consecutive year, the board is being presented with significant changes to the strategic objectives at budget review. Does that meet what you were saying, Melinda? Um. Yeah, it was before that, I think, where it said that they that there were policy changes that came. No, we're taking out the word policy yeah, and yeah. putting in strategic objectives in it. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay. Okay. Or, you know, or lack of understanding how how these tactical decisions go toward what our strategic objectives are. Mm. So how do these tactical decisions move us towards our strategic objectives? Yeah, but I do like the word lack of understanding as currently presented. I, I think that's one of my concerns also. Mine too. Um, I, yeah, I mean, you know, not to be, not to, speak too much about this but one example is i would have understood it a lot more if the presentation said we don't need department chairs because we have limited resources and i would rather distribute those those people throughout our buildings as assistant principals and then here's why you know like i but instead we're like oh i don't need one of the department chairs and i don't like it's i just don't understand what we're you know what we're trying to achieve and um some of the backup information i just didn't find that helpful like number of assistant principals versus our derg like things like that i just we might need them but it wasn't explained that's all i'm and and and, and i think that's where i'm i'm similar 
I mean, again, I like staying in my lane and I'm not going to tell you what curriculum or other things need to be. However, my professional career has been how to solve problems. And one of the things are is what are our objectives? What's the problem? What's the causes right. of these problems? What have we tried to do to resolve those problems? And here's where we're coming out with the answer after we've tried. And these are the things that we modified that may have just created a, sim- a single problem. Um, and, and then when we're done, here's how this meets our strategic vision. And this is why our schools will be better when we do this. Um, I don't like words like uh, just being answered by, oh, this meets efficiency. Well, yeah, it also meets mom, apple pie, and hot dogs. Um, that, that, that's not sufficient for my brain on how I was trained to do certain things. So, um, well, the other uh, thing is, Jack, just building on what you said is I don't really hear about a lot of problems until super, super Saturday. And that's when you start hearing about all the problems that exist. And I, I just, I think it's too late to start, um, you know, identifying some of this stuff. Yeah. And from listening to board meetings, like uh, the simple one is during this special ed presentation, we heard no discussion of the possibility based upon the change in law to expand ELP. And not that I'm against expanding ELP, and I'm not against because it's, you know, revenue positive um, and that. But, you know, here's why didn't we hear it during the special ed presentation? That's you know, that's that or that we're considering this at least. And we'll come back to you with what our answer is. Um, and then here's how we thought it through and, and other things along those lines. Um, one of the other things that I just had, which was anecdotal, was that, you know, it appears that we have more PPTs than, um, than our DERG does. But if those PPTs are addressing social emotional needs, then that's where I want them to be. And maybe we have a definition for an assistant principal, and I'm going to make up numbers that say 25% of their time should be on PPTs, 25% on evaluating teachers, 25% on other administrative duties, and 25 for walking the halls and getting to know the other students. Well, if they're spending 40% of their time on PPTs, and a lot of it has to do with social-emotional which is more important than walking the halls or even evaluating a teacher in my mind, then maybe what you originally perceive of what the allocation of work should be is that's what needs to be changed, not throwing another body. That's not resolving the problem other than I'm lowering the percentage of time. But maybe what you really needed to do is go back and look at what your vision of a job description was and where you expected them to spend. Um, the comment I made to somebody is, I one time took a time management course very early in my career, really didn't help me. But um, they said that you do a list of 10 things that you wanna get done in a day, and then you go back and you see you did five other things and not, and only one of the top five out of the 10. And when that was presented to the instructor, the instructor said, well, you did the five things that were most important that day. And so if we're spending more time on PPTs because of social emotional needs or other things like that, that's the most important thing that they should be spending their time on. And, and you know, I, I haven't heard those stats or anything like that to explain that. And that to me is somewhat of a concern, you know. But, but yes, I think that's good input. Beth, you, you go ahead. Yeah, Melinda, I, I mean, I echo, um, I've been, and I've been, I spoke with Peter and, and Beth as well. It's, um, I echo your sentiments in that the vision isn't clear to me that the changes that have been 
you know, I, I don't follow this very closely until it gets to budget season and then I start paying attention a little more and I don't have kids in the school system anymore, but maybe that is there. It is things that are happening. I mean, Beth would know more than anybody. Right. But when, when I get, when I get a little bit surprised about all these things that are happening in this budget, um, I, I don't know if it's because um, when, when you're so immersed in your own budget process, you actually aren't thinking that you have to connect the dots for people. You, it's like inside your own inside baseball. Maybe they already know why the changes that they're making um, will work towards their strategic plan. They're not articulating it, which is, you know, and, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they all, you know. Oh, I, I, Jenny, don't. I, I know, not, Pollyanna. <laughs> no, no yes. I, I agree. Katie actually came out think, and yeah. said I that think, she was surprised on things. David yeah. Brown was talking about it. Yes. Others have made that comment. This came as as much surprise to the board as it did to those in the audience. So I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna trust. So don't assume that they had that knowledge. They no, but I'm gonna trust that the board of ed members are thinking the same thing we are, and we'll start saying we need to connect the. Please explain how we get from A to Z and how this is fulfilling our objectives. And to your point, Jack, make sure you know what the objective is, not just put out, like, let the plan be fluid enough. If you if it turns out that these extra administrators are actually fulfilling a role in, in, in an issue that's kind of growing, which is the social emotional learning, for example, then, then so be it. But um, my my thought was you, you kind of need a qualitative analysis to make sure that the actions that you're doing and, and the results that you're getting, like the change in the number of teachers, the increase in the pay, um, the change in the number of administrators, the number of PPTs and the and the IEPs that are getting issued. What is that data? sort of start to tell you the picture when you when you see it all laid out in a 30,000 foot well and the, the part the part that grows that we haven't figured out how to put um you know how to stop the increases in the special ed and i mean obviously that's a red flag obviously I know, but like PPTs, for example, I mean, Jack, we don't have to have APs in all PPT me meetings. So like, that's just like, like if we're having double the number of PPT meetings that New Canaan's has, maybe we need them, but maybe you don't need a full team. I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know. These are all board of ed. Exactly. But, committee. But I hear questions. special the special ed update and none of this comes up. Mm -hmm. And then it comes up in the budget discussion and i it's just it doesn't belong in the budget discussion we should you know we should be grappling with this stuff all year long and i'm happy to spend every single dollar but i i just i get so tired of all these changes and great ideas happening the first saturday in january yeah i i'm i'm, I'm not as happy to spend all the dollars <laughs> until i understand what the rationale for why we're doing it, what we've done to try and resolve the issue, and um, how this will make us a better educational environment. Because while I'm not an educator, um, I'll joke that my family business was education based upon what my parents and many of my relatives did. Um, so education may have been the family business. Um, I know that if I just went into any of the um, people I reported to when they sent me in to resolve something and said, eh, let's just hire more managers and people to it, um, my career would have been very short. That, that's not always the answer. Without yeah, keep, giving keep a Keep doing what we're doing, but with more of us yeah. isn't always the answer. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think the I think the Board of Ed, um, I'm I'm assuming they're gonna be asking very tough questions as well. 
And they've been asking uh, some, but they also have a very short time to make certain. Yeah. Um, all right. Are, are we done with this? And then we can move over to a brief conversation on, um, on debt. Um, I've asked Jenny to work with Louisa and Bert, and I'll participate only because when I'm with the three of them, I learn a hell of a lot. Um, and having the least knowledge of debt of any of the three of them to organize and orchestrate and start working with the um, Board of Finance on, on this. But So I'm going to hand it over to Jenny for a little bit, and then uh, we have minutes that I can't forget to do, Jenny. Okay. Yeah, no, um, Jen Cherneski sent out um, uh, basically pro forma of a list of the outstanding debt and what is projected. Um, but a couple things that are not in the projection is the, that doesn't go out. Well, that's, I don't know if you saw, if you all saw the, um, debt service curve, the debt service profile, it was a pretty colorful chart. Uh, there's a couple of big items that are probably going to be missing over the next five to seven years, maybe, um, cause we do probably have to start looking at Darien high school and middle sex middle school. If you believe that every 20 years you have to do some sort of capital improvement. Um, you're, my you're, concern, be, be careful on your words. There is a desire to look at it. We desire. do not have to do it. Right. There's a desire if with 20 year capital projects, that is when their average life, that's the that's about the time you start looking at it. So um, that absent, um, my concern is that we're the shape of our debt service curve is um, I think we're going to go out 30 years on Great Island. We, we already did. Right. And we're going to go. Uh, I think the Board of Finance last night discussed going 20 years um, for amortization on the school bonds that's tied to the project life. Um, even though state statute now allows school bonds to go longer, they can, they do have the option to go 30 years. And I would venture to guess they have the option to go up to 30 years. So instead of 20, they could go 22, 25, 27. That's a board of finance um, decision. I obviously when you issue shorter term debt, uh, the lower the cost, the overall interest cost is lower, but you it's kind of like having a, a seven year mortgage or a 15 year mortgage or a 30 year mortgage. It's you also have to manage the annual payment and the annual debt service payment has a direct impact on our mill rate. So um, my background was public finance for many years and I, I spent most of my career restructuring issuers debt service profiles so that you could sort of manage the um the tax rate better so i you know the that's one thing i'll be curious to see how we end up um playing with the amortization of this upcoming debt we also have bonds that are um the thing about municipal debt tax exempt debt is um you unlike a traditional mortgage where you can refinance at any time uh, all of our bonds are issued with which with what's called an optional redemption date which means you get one date one time to refinance your debt um, on a tax exempt basis and with when you're within the 90 day window of that date you can execute a refinancing we have a couple of bonds that are there close to it but interest rates are not lower than when we issued them. So they're, they're going to be um, probably staying outstanding at their lower rate for a little while longer. And as we'll see what happens um, historically, when the town gets into the window to refinance, they pull the trigger and they do it. Um, let's, you know, something to think about. And I'm sure our municipal advisors watching this all the time because, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, going to tell the town when it's ready to pull the trigger. And so will the board of finance. So when all these, when these bonds um, are coming into the window to be refinanced, it's an opportunity to restructure 
um, and certainly lower the debt service, the annual debt service cost. So the, that my biggest concern is um, is the shape of that curve, which is high now, declining over time, but then we're going to be layering on top of that. Um, so I think we're going to Jack. What's the number? Like two hundred, a little over two hundred million is what's expected. Uh, well, um, we're going to be well over two hundred. Um, if you look at that that debt service. And where we are, and part of it is also understanding what is authorized but not issued. Um, right. And again, that's a big concern of mine. That, as an example, that on the Hanson Road Bridge that we approved, um, just say the round numbers: it's uh, two point four million. One point two of it is coming back from the state. We had to authorize the two point four. And if it comes in at 2.4 and we paid the 1.2 from us and we get the remaining from the state, then that bond is over. My concern is, is that let's say because there's contingency and other things in there that we only spend two million. So we get a million back from the state. We have a million that we're going to go out on bonds. There's also 400,000 of debt that based upon, depending upon how things are written in the bond council's um, um, resolution that we've looked at, in that particular case, the 400,000 should be rescinded once the project is completed and we've gotten our money from the state. It's to ensure that the Board of Finance is doing that. Um, that's that's part of our concern. We don't want that money uh, floating around that somebody then says, oh, well, we have 400000 to go and build another bridge. And that, that's not what we want to do. Um, in the case that I mentioned, we did do bonding early on a roof, we included in a bond. We ended up costing less, and we also got state grants back. So there was 274000 associated with that bond that we've already issued. And one side of it would say that if we've overbonded, you're supposed to go back in the market and buy up your bonds. You know, you're supposed to reclaim those bonds that you have an issue. In this particular case, because the schools are still going through renovation, they were able to move that bonding from that school over to the HHR project. But we would prefer that that is not the common practice. So that's some of the things that we've been addressing um, with with the um, director of finance, um, town administrator, and I've had conversations with uh, Jim on that and um, other members of the board of finance. So and, and go from there. So and that's just a quick overview that we wanted to go to. We're going to be doing more of that on the budget. Um, it's worthwhile to listen to what John Wolcott said at last night's meeting um, and what he read, um, because I think that we are in agreement with John's overall uh, position. So while while we didn't table this for other different reasons, we, we do believe that what he was saying is spot on. So I, di I did want to give that shout out. Um, with that, I believe we have some minutes to do, and I corrected the voting on it because people were in and out um, for various reasons. So there were some votes where people were not present for it, and I indicated that on the vote list. Um, overall, I do want to thank Holly. She did a wonderful job on the minutes. Um, and so we'll go from there, Jenny. Do we have to first have a motion to amend the minutes and then have a motion to approve the new minutes? Yeah, unfortunately, we do. Yeah. Okay. Um, can Can I have an amendment to amend the minutes to reflect the appropriate bond um, voting um, for what occurred in our last meeting on the eleventh? I see Jenny moving. I'll need a second. I have Beth seconding. All in favor? Say aye. Fine. Now. 
on the, um, you can take over moving the corrected minutes. Uh, yes, so we were, well, yes. May I have a motion, did everyone, any questions on the minutes from the um, December, sorry, Jet. January 11th meeting. Um, if there's no, uh, if there are any questions or con comments, may I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended from the January 11th special meeting? Bill. And Bill. And Bill. And Bill, Bill D, Bill S. Okay. And then we need a motion to approve um, the minutes from, hang on. Well, we did those. We did those. That's it. So, well, well we hold on. We need to actually all approve it. We propose and second, and oh. we need to approve it. Right. We're, going, we're oh. voting on them now. Right. So, all in favor of the amended minutes, raise your hand. Yes. Okay. It's unanimous. That's great. So, um, can I have um, a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Uh, Peter raised his hand real quick, so he gets first. <laughs> Malin is second. Thank you all for spending the time here. We did some good questions, and I appreciate all the input that we did here. Um, once again, proving that f &B is a great committee. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful, good night, all. Wonderful good night. night.